do I even have OneNote on here? <laughs> I, don't I don't know if we want to record ourselves installing iPad apps, but it shouldn't take too long. I've never used it before on this device because I only use my iPad to play games, <laughs> I guess. It's not a useful tool for actually doing things. What do you use it for? Do you do work? Uh, reading, writing. Well. When I want to do one particular task. What do you read? Like, you're not reading books on here, are you? On the iPad? Uh, yeah. You have a Kindle, though. I mean, I do. But that doesn't mean I don't like the iPad. No. I don't like reading on the iPad compared to the Kindle. No, I agree. Like, I don't actually read that much on uh, the iPad except textbooks, which work really well for viewing diagrams and other things with uh, non-adjustable font size or whatever. When the, when the Kindle first came out, like the third or fourth generation, they had a Kindle DX. It acted as a, a giant textbook viewer, and it was kind of a cool concept, but Kindles are still really slow, so if you try to highlight or add notes, it, it just doesn't work that well. It's confusing. So I don't know which one I have, but I will say that highlighting text sometimes, I just want to know the definition of a word. It just takes so long, and it kind of takes you out of the book, but I do like the handy... The handy definitions <laughs> that are just like right on hand all the time, which is oh. what handy means. But you know what I mean? Like, I <laughs> like being able to touch the word and find out what it means, but it's amazing how long it takes. But I guess it's like not a, it's not a fancy device. I don't even really know how you would describe the Kindle. It's not like, it's a computer, but it's not very good computer. <laughs> I don't know. How, to, <laughs> how do you describe what a Kindle is? It's a, a single purpose f a device, which is something it isn't very common these days. Like cell phones have replaced so many different uh, single purpose devices. And in some, you know, we've sacrificed quality in almost every one of these. And uh, the Kindle is kind of like a new age single purpose device. Like it has a few, it's like a watch, you know, it'll tell you the time and date. It has a great battery life. You're not going to get distracted with notifications. And so there's a lot of good things about it, but uh, it's too slow. And I find myself having my phone way more often than my Kindle and I don't have to like sync it because it's always connected. And there's a, I guess if I read novels for extended lengths of time, but usually it's just a few minutes here and there. I think that's why I don't like the iPad for reading stuff. It's so easy to like go on the internet or do anything else besides like stay in the book. Plus, I don't know. It's like a light bulb in your eyeball. So I think like this, just a screen, unless you're using mm -hmm. the black option. And you don't even have the option of changing your font color on the on these. So I don't really see the benefit if you can't change the font color on it. Did you ever use any other e-reader, like on your Android phone? Um, I used Overdrive before. I have not good experiences using other apps besides <laughs> Kindle on Android devices. The library app is probably one of the worst ones. I was thinking of, actually, your I think your Windows phone was a good example. You had an e-reader there, and you could pretty much change everything. And my experience when I had an Android phone is that when I used those applications, it was nifty that I got to change everything. But at the same time, there were so many options that I found myself constantly tweaking it, like making the text size a little bit bigger, changing the font, making the background a little bit different contrast. And it was... I just wanted somebody to pick, like, the four best options. And I think sometimes the Kindle app will limit you just a hair too much like you said like there should be a gray option like and that's a totally reasonable one there's a lot of web pages that do that anyway yeah there, there's a lot of little shit like that that could easily fix i am in my kindle app on my phone right now and there's like seven texts you can choose from maybe kindle is just self-limiting so that you can't make those changes but sometimes i don't know sometimes i, I don't like looking at a certain font it makes it harder to read, and I prefer reading over listening. Like, I've tried listening to books a couple of times. You know how I am. I need to find out, like, all the stupid little details, and it's hard for me to put those details at least in some part of my brain, or at least, like, take them in at all mm -hmm. when I'm listening to a book, because I often have to rewind and stuff. I think it's bothering me. I'm reading East of Eden. And I just want to try it out because I do change my text size based on like time of day, if I'm tired, if I want to wear my glasses. When I used to get my nails done and I was reading whatever book I was reading, I was reading Hamilton at the time, actually. You don't, you can't pick up your hands, but I wanted to be able to read. So I would make the text the smallest possible with like the most lines jammed in the page as possible. So I could, I would only have to change the page occasionally, but that doesn't really serve my interest most of the time. 
Because then I'm like squinting at these baby words that <laughs> you can only see if you're like a fresh child with like good vision. And that was not, it hasn't <laughs> been me since I was like 13. So like like grocery store fresh, very fresh child. <laughs> what? <laughs> I don't know. What like the, the calling a child fresh just sounded like an odd word choice to me. It was. It was an odd word choice. Fresh <laughs> child, like a young one. Okay. Well, if you think of it this way, like those cells are freshly developed every day. Like their their body is technically getting bigger, so they are they have fresh new cells, uh, present and available for use. <laughs> so technically, they're fresh. I think what happens is. Like your body's always regenerating new cells, but kids are better at it. Like their cells are easier to repair, and the repairs are better. I guess that's kind of what I was saying, but this is this is more of what I'm thinking. Like every time I see my nephew, it surprises me how much bigger he is. So like right now, as human adults, like you're not adding to your bone mass. I mean, you could by like lifting and strengthening your bones, but your bones aren't getting longer anymore. Your head isn't baby sized anymore. You know, it's like it's final size. You're regenerating cells that are being lost so you can maintain like homeostasis for your body. But children are actively growing. So like, like, I don't know. Is it cell death? Like rates of cell death go up when you're older? I don't know. But I just think it's like it surprised me every time. Like the ability of like a thing to like add on to itself is interests me. I don't know if I'm explaining this at all of what. Uh, No, I I think I get it. I get it perfectly. You are analyzing your nephew for his cell death. Cell growth. Okay, growth. Yeah, you were analyzing his cell growth. I'm sure he has some cell death and, going and on. And viewing him as a bag of cells. It is pretty interesting. I actually kind of do think of him in that way, I guess. Never actively. I don't go around being like, hey, come here, bag of cells. I want to check out your current <laughs> growth so I can like write it down in my log. But I don't know. It is cool to watch like a little kid grow up. I didn't have like a younger sibling that I... I mean, I was I'm older than Josh, my brother, but I was about like actually my nephew's age right now when my brother was born. He's like 16 months. So it's not like I really got to see Josh grow up. Like I was a kid at the same time. We were almost, I mean, we were often like punished similarly or like we got to have do similar things because we were too similar in age. We hung out like too much doing similar stuff. He was my peer, you know? So I don't know. It's weird watching like a little kid go from like, nothing to like running around doing stuff it's pretty neat i don't know i just and i think about i think about cells adding on while i'm looking at this kid being cute do you look at this kid (laughs) and like feel a sense of kinship oh yeah i love that kid he's so cute and when i went up there last time um i went to see a movie with my brother while his wife and the baby went to like i think a lularoe party it's like a party about like really soft pants (laughs) (laughs) Anyway, so we were hanging out, and then, like, Melissa and Jack came home. He came over, but I squatted down, and I was like, come here, Jackie, or whatever I call him. He ran over and, like, gave me a little snuggly hug, and it was, like, the cutest moment. It's so sweet. I love him so much. Yeah, I don't look at him like a bag of cells all the time. I'm interrupting you because there's rules now where you cannot be on a playground if you're not there accompanying a kid, which is reasonable. It's a reasonable thing. Like, I'm never just going to show up at a playground to play with strange kids. Like, that's that's not a reasonable thing. And it's not breaking any laws. Those are bullshit rules. I guess that's true. I feel like I've seen it on signs. Like, you can't be at the playground. That's what I mean. Like, those are if if you put. OK, so cities have like two ways of managing people. One of them is through laws, and the other is through, like, perceived laws. And this is one of those perceived ones where it's not really a rule, and they can't really arrest you for it, but they're going to put up a sign anyway because it'll keep a lot of uh, potential issues at bay, like people, like, basically false alarms. Supposedly, the only people who would disobey the sign are people who are actual pedophiles, which is not how that works. I do feel like they also are like, well, we put a sign there so you knew you weren't supposed to be there. Right. So you read it, and you violated the rule. I can't put up a sign and be like, you know, no women can stand here within five feet of the sign. That's not a law. Like, that's just a fucking sign, whether or not a city ordinance put it up or not. Interesting. And I did technically break one of these rules, because one time I went on as a walk around this neighborhood, Mm -hmm. 
And, like, I've been walking for a while, and I came across, like, a little park that I didn't know existed in this neighborhood. Like, it's just tucked behind these houses. And uh, I was just, like, hanging around. I was playing on the park equipment. Then I saw that thing, and I was like, oh. I mean, it's not like I got up and I was like, I better leave right now. But it was just like, that's weird. (laughs) I guess I'm not allowed to be here because I'm older than, like, I don't know. What even age cuts you off? Are you 17 and you're not allowed to be at the park because you're probably going to not be, like, actually playing on the swings? Right, or 18 and suddenly you're not allowed to go on swings without, a, you know, a kid. And, you know, when I when we lived in Waldorf, I used to go, you know, I used to, like, go walk around all the time, like, late at night. Yeah. I used to sit at the playground and, like, listen to podcasts and, like, swing on the swings. Mm-hmm. So it's a good thing, like, people weren't hassling me. Yeah. <laughs> people, <laughs> it would have been, like, really yeah. annoying because it was a nice place to hang out. But I will say that children are awful at cleaning up wrappers and bottles and stuff at the playground. There was an unbelievable amount of litter. I used to like to sit there and listen to podcasts. And like sometimes I wouldn't, this might be weird, but like I cleaned up all of the litter at that playground over the course of a couple of days. Like I wasn't doing it all at once, but like I'll just pick up litter. I was like, I got bored and I'll just like sit down or like play on the little like. You know those things around springs and you can like rock back and forth like a little like little kids do. <laughs> they had those there, so I'll play on those. Sometimes. It's a very adult thing to do, cleaning up other people's trash. I feel like this is making me out to be kind of a weird person. Mm-hmm. Me being out <laughs> and I clean up trash in a playground, <laughs> playing on children's toys. Anyway, but I did do this, but like they do not respect that free area to hang out in. Just throwing trash. The trash can was literally right there. There were like two trash cans even there. It's about rebelliousness, Mari. Well, it's a bad way to rebel. You're rebelling against the wrong thing. Who are you rebelling against? You're making the planet all trashy. Uh, the man. And your parents don't even see you doing it. Like, what? What? who are you rebelling but against? But they know they did it. And all the people who are like you who would say, don't litter here, kid. And they're like, fuck you, authority figure. I'll do what I want. I think I maybe just like not... It doesn't occur to me to throw a bunch of trash on the ground outside the... Just put it in a trash bag. And you can dump it out of 7-Eleven if you want. Like, free trash disposal. Just don't... Uh. I'm, I'm going to credit Nickelodeon uh, for their amazing campaign of, if you see a piece of litter, pick it up. Because I'm pretty sure that at this point, you could, like, roll around with some gangsters and rob a bank. But the second you threw your soda can outside, so one of your buddies would be like, what the fuck is wrong with you? Are you a heathen? <laughs> What are you doing? Why? I don't see the benefit. And I also don't see why people think it's just something that they should be able to do. (laughs) I've heard some funny stories, which I won't recount here. Actually, I will. We can cut it. My brother, when he was first dating his wife, they were in New Hampshire. And like Josh was driving, I think. And he said, hey, get rid of this for like a paper cup. And he meant like put it in a trash bag. I guess we have a similar mentality of like, don't throw shit out the window. And she opens the window and just, like, chucks it out the window. <laughs> and he just, like, stared open-mouthed at her. Like, did that just happen? And he was like, what the hell was that? <laughs> was... I mean, Melissa is a reasonable person who I don't consider to be, like, an asshole or anything like that. The only thing that I ever feel like is okay to throw out of your window when you're in a car or anywhere, just throw it as trash, is Food that definitely biodegrades and or would be okay for animals to eat. I did I did for a long time have a very like trashy car. I don't anymore, but like but I wouldn't throw out the window. My car would just be full of trash. Maybe some people think this is okay. I do believe that there's a portion of the population that like has no qualms about litter. When you go over the the Nice Bridge, I think I've been calling it the Nice Bridge, but someone corrected me recently. Those those people can go eat a dick. Anyway, so do you, <laughs> who can eat a dick? They're calling it niece. So people nice? correcting someone's name, like God. No, no, no. I am. Then I have to eat a lot of dicks because I correct people <laughs> all the time. So it's the niece bridge. This person is our bridge. They should have it be called the right okay. thing. So yeah. when you cross over, though, the point of me saying this is that uh, there are signs all over the place on Virgi- on like three hundred one. It's don't litter. Like, there's so many of them. Like, I don't think Maryland has nearly as many signs as, like, this area in Virginia does. Yeah. But 
we would be driving through this area, my brother and I, and uh, it looks like to me that it had an outboard motor on the picture, hmm. like on the sign. So like every time we drive by, I'd be like, I'll be so confused. And like, I didn't bring it up to him the first couple of times we passed him because I was like, that can't be an outboard motor. What is an outboard motor? Any motor you attach to a boat so it can like go in the water. So, like, I'm pretty sure it's called an outboard motor. All right. So I thought, I was like, who is throwing these motors away on the side of the road enough that they need signs everywhere, like for miles? <laughs> so eventually I brought it to my brother. And I was like, Josh, next time we're driving through Virginia, you have to see this sign. Like, you have to see this outboard motor sign. He looks at this thing and, and it turns out it's just like a can. <laughs> I'll have to show you this picture. Oh, here we go. Just look up Virginia littering signs and on images. And just like at first glance. You think that would be an outboard motor? <laughs> when you look at it very closely, it's obviously cans and whatever the hell that is at the bottom, some paper. Like it's this square sign that says littering is illegal, like littering on the top and at the bottom is illegal. Yeah. And then there is one of those red like Ghostbusters circles with a line through it. But instead of the ghost in the middle, <laughs> there's like a can and like some paper, but the can is a white label on it. So when you first glance at the sign going at speed, it looks like an outboard motor. I'm really sad it's not an outboard motor, by uh, the way. That's great. Like, I wish it was. Anyway, so you were asking if we wanted to, like, look at these themes we developed or topics. And I was just reading this. And I noticed that she wrote, Mari, the gamer. And then below that, it says Tetris and all that it lacks. <laughs> so, and I know you wrote that because I've been talking about how I like this game, this very old game on Super Nintendo called Tetris Attack. I love that game. And you seem to have like a thing against Tetris generally, which I don't think your sentiment is shared by the general populace. I'm actually just throwing that in there to because you seem to love it so much, oh. but you also you're you're dismissive of games that I think are good, or that like even what? that you played before. Like when you played World of Warcraft, you're kind of dismissive of that, which I think is like an amazingly complex game that couldn't have existed at any other time in history, like even in gaming history. And it's just this fantastic achievement of innovation and and entertainment. And yet, like a lot of people are just like, "Ow, oh, that game." I mean, that's exactly how I respond. <laughs> When people talk about it, but maybe, maybe because I care less about games than most people. Like, a cool game comes out, and I'm not like, oh, man, look at that technological achievement in gaming. <laughs> like, granted, I think you got excited when I told you that I played the World of Warcraft beta when I was in college. I was very excited about that. I, I do throw that around sometimes because I know, like, it's interesting that people are like, what? You played that game before it came out? Before it was cool. Yeah, I played that game before it was cool. <laughs> But yeah, but it wasn't like it was my idea or that would ever have happened based on anything I did. Like, I was dating this guy, and he put his name on a list to get the beta for World of Warcraft because he was really into this game. Like, my my dad and brother had played Warcraft in those games when I was a kid, so, like, I knew what they were. And I used to watch my dad play World of Warcraft. Like, I would just hang out with him while he was playing, which sounds boring, and it probably wasn't, like, the best use of my time. But I was trying to find ways to hang out with my dad as a kid. Like, I was into sports. I guess we could kind of bond, and I would help him strategize, which actually was really fun. That's cool. We only had one computer, so it's not like I could have started playing myself. He was always on it. Yeah. So anyway, so my boyfriend applied to get the beta, and we got it. So I made my own character, and it was like a night elf. It was a job. A druid, maybe? I think it was a night elf druid. <laughs> it was pretty cool, but like I only lasted through the seventh level, which is like nothing. Hmm. That's like you're barely even in the game yet. But I don't know, if, it, if I had had my own computer to play this game on, and, like, it was the two of us playing, like, side by side, it'd be different. But, like, we were sharing the gaming computer. It didn't work on my laptop. I don't know. We were house painters at the time, so we really enjoyed our, our downtime. <laughs> so, like, he wanted to play this game. It was, like, fine. And I was really into reading at the time, too. Like, I had a list of all these classics or books you're supposed to have read. And I was, like, plowing through them. That's the time when I was, like, reading Harry Potter also and other British books. I would be, I would make tea, which I don't even like, and I would drink tea and like, if I had crumpets, I would be eating crumpets, whatever those are, like biscuit cakes. I don't even know, but I would drink tea while like reading. 
that's what I was doing. I really enjoyed playing the game for a while, but I feel like you that game was a game you got to put time into. And I think that's also a reason I never played. Because, I mean, how much time can you really put in playing Tetris? Uh, there's, it's like there's, there's challenges, but like you hate this game, apparently. <laughs> you hate it so much. <laughs> but... I mean, like, I can play that game a lot, but it's not like I'm achieving new levels all the time. And, like, eventually that game is going to end. But, like, World of Warcraft, I feel like it's one of those games where you have to, like, grind through certain points to get to different levels. Like, I think they players literally call it grinding. Yeah. Getting through, like, some of the parts that are harder and more boring just to achieve, like, enough experience or to get, like, certain items. And I don't... I waste a lot of time in my life. I'm definitely not the best user of time. I play on my phone a lot. Or I'm, like, playing this stupid SimCity build-it game on my iPad. But for some reason, I was never willing to commit those wasted hours to, like, playing a video game. Yeah, no, that sounds good. I, I like, I mean, I like the, the explanation, but I disagree with a couple of things. All right. One, you are a gamer because, like, even Tetris, as little as I like it because it's repetitive and not very engaging, it, uh... It's still a game, and so is SimCity Build It, and Bejeweled, and all these other things that uh, hardcore gamers will disparage. And, like, some games have the slow burn. World of Warcraft, like you said, there's certain grinding points. And that kind of mimics real life in a way, like where, you know, you don't always have interesting things going on. And because that's such a well-rounded game, like, I I espouse all this love for it. I don't even play it, but (laughs) mostly because of the time factor. But, uh... Yeah, the time factor! But I think what makes it worth it, though, is if you have a community surrounding it. If you have friends, if you have family. And I think that's why everyone starts getting into it, is because they already know somebody that's going to play. So you can hang out with, like, four or five friends and just go do these, like, little menial things. Kind of like, it's like doing a beer run. A beer run's not fun, but, I mean, it's not supposed to be on its surface level, but it is. Because you you go with friends, and, like, you're, you're picking out things, you're talking and having conversation. And it's not really even about the activity. It's just the anticipation of having fun later and doing this little menial thing now that doesn't require a lot of engagement. And I think a lot of World of Warcraft is kind of like that, and all these other um, MMORPGs have these these different elements. So if you want to be heavily engaged, you can do a hard or difficult quest or... Or you can just go grind and just bullshit around and try to level up and get gold so you can do something more interesting later. So there, there's a lot of different elements to it. And I think that's why I'm kind of surprised you don't play it or something like it because you do have a lot of downtime. But at the same time, I guess you don't know anybody. Like you don't have a boyfriend or a uh, friend <laughs> in trying to push you into it. You don't have any friends. <laughs> Nobody you don't have likes a boyfriend. you. Boyfriend. No one's ever going to want to play games with you, <laughs> so obviously you wouldn't play. I mean, like, you don't have any friends in that in that game. And that's the same reason I don't. Like, if I if you started playing and then two weeks later you're like, I need someone to help me out with this, you know, I would probably do that just because it was a, an opportunity to hang out in a, a different way. No, I like, I see what you're saying. And I can see why now, like, based on some of the conversations we've had and this one, I can see why you think that I would, like, be interested in this kind of stuff. But also, I do think that World of Warcraft might be a bad example. Okay. Just because I think you got excited just because I had played the beta <laughs> I did. again. Like you really, <laughs> you really went with that um, to the point where you want me to play it again now. Like, I mean, how long ago was that beta? Like, I was in college, man, at least twelve years ago. Hmm. But, but like, okay, so I can see where that would be fun. Like, if it was a current game, like, and I think okay, so I feel like there's like limiting factors with me. I usually find other things to spend my money on other than the kind of equipment that's needed for gaming. When they, especially when technologies came out, I've never spent money on a new like gaming system. I have bought like a Super Nintendo and a regular Nintendo, but that they were like retro systems by then. It was like cool to play the old games and I wanted to play like Touch the Tack, but I don't have a desktop and like desktops are usually the kind of computers you get for games. I don't think hardware is as big of a factor as you're making it out to be. You actually have the space now. I mean, not that it wouldn't fill up a bunch of stuff, but you have a bigger hard drive than I thought. And I know your computer could handle it. I've played it on a shittier computer, and it still felt pretty good. Okay. Okay, so we've overcome the problem of not having a computer. I think when I said before about, like, my time usage, like, if you play any kind of games, you play Candy Crush, like, you're technically a gamer. Like, you're playing games. Right. Like, it's not a, it's not a derogatory term. <laughs> I imagine, like, gamers like the way like colloquially not like the technical definition would be like people who play games that are very involved the kind of games i associate with gamers they're like progressive games where like 
levelings involved and like you unlock things as you go along which i guess happens in every game god i'm like really not <laughs> i'm not gonna be able to differentiate it uh i know what you mean i think what you're trying to say is like the the level of knowledge required to start is lower in the games that you like to play it only takes a few minutes like unlike that board game we played with your roommate one time it didn't take 45 minutes of explanation to learn how to play tetris hey, what game were we playing when you came over was it about wine making i don't think we so. talked about the wine one we ended up playing one about uh, civilizations and factories and things like that like we had all these workers and there was all these rules and like attacks and things like it was really kind of that's a lot of games man that's like a lot of games <laughs> i don't know man it was all i remember is it felt like there was basically four games in this one there that's how it that's how it is okay but in defense of board games not that i played them ever before like i met my current roommate Inviting you over to hang out the way I did was not the way I should have done it to introduce you to games. Like, I usually end up getting pissed off. I usually end up being kind of annoyed to the point where I'm sitting there kind of simmering but trying to be cool because we're playing a game and it's, like, supposed to be fun. Like, don't be a bitch while you're running a game. <laughs> like, something happens. I don't understand a rule or, like, I didn't get I didn't get a rule until, like, way too late in the game where, like, obviously I'm going to lose now because of it. But then, like, subsequent plays, especially when you understand stuff, then it becomes fun because there are so many different ways to get to win which is where there's multiple games within a game become fun, which I guess is why any game is fun, because there's different aspects to it. But board games are very, like, you're only playing it for, like, a certain amount of time. Like, you're not in it for days. You're probably in it for maybe a couple of hours, and even a couple of hours ends up being like, all right, we're tired of playing this game, someone please win now, yeah. or we better hurry up and win the next couple of rounds. <laughs> so, if I am going to play a game, I don't know if I want to choose World of Warcraft being, it's a game I've already, already played, kind of. Yeah. Only to level seven, which is like. 12 years ago. Nothing. 12 years ago, <laughs> which is like nothing in that in the game. And also like, you know, 12 years ago, like it's, it's a different thing now, probably a different animal. But should I be playing a game that's like more contemporary? Or like if you're talking about the community thing, like is World of Warcraft the best choice for this? Okay, I can look more into this, but I don't think it's as far behind as you might assume. There are some games out there that are, like, I think a Sharon's Call was an MMORPG that came out before World of Warcraft, and they just shut down their servers this year. It was, like, hardcore people, like, playing those kind of games. Like, there's a lot of newcomers that come into it, like, 15 years as an 18-year run. Like, that does that happen? Where they have, like, there's so many new users all the time? Because that would be, like, a brand new... No, I'm, I don't even know how much like actual like coordination or knowledge I'm going to have for any of this. So I feel like I'm going to be like sucking for a long time. Well, first off, it's really easy to start, but uh, that's it's probably for the best for reducing that level of knowledge and effort to get started and actually enjoy it. And uh, what they do is release expansions every couple of years, and that boosts the um, the population of the servers. And World of Warcraft was so big that even the residual players that still play now are still in the millions. Like, it, it has to be, because I think their top, the most they ever had was around 10 or 12 million users. I like games that I have progressive advances, and, like, there's this ongoing thing I'm building. Like, even SimCity Build It feels pretty good, because there is change over the course of months of playing, and seeing that your, your effort is amounting to something is rewarding. Not to mention there is, like, community and all that built into World of Warcraft. So it wouldn't be terrible. It's just a matter of whether or not I could find a community I liked. So I don't think community is, like, a big thing for me with this because I feel like, I mean, maybe it'll be something I want to do is, like, make online friends. There are mechanisms in the game to form groups easily with strangers. I kind of like the idea of online friends, but I don't have that many or any more. But I always like the concept of having different personalities you could reach out to and have conversations with, like, at will. Hmm. Like, you don't have to keep them in your life hardcore, and, uh... <laughs> it's my best friend! Yeah, they don't have to be like that, but you can have people that you just chat with and, like, you do this thing with, but they don't necessarily mean that much. Like, that, uh, that Sharon's Call shutdown was actually interesting, because the only reason I heard about it was because somebody filmed their grandfather talking about it. He had been playing it for, like, 14 years or something, and he was... Wow. Uh, you know, he had formed all these relationships on there, and of course, you know, it's not like everyone just stops playing games. They probably all jumped over to WoW or something else. But it's like a club ending or something, because, like, you say you're hanging out with these people, but you never became, like, hanging out on your own friends, which would be, like, on the internet. But, like, if your common ground thing is over, like, a club disbands, or, like, a class is over, even if you like people, you won't necessarily, like, hang out with them anymore, because, like, the reason for doing it is gone. 
Yeah, it's kind of like a, it's like when high school ends. You know, everyone yeah. talks about remaining friends through college and this and that. And of course, it's almost it's beyond cliche now to to recognize that your friends aren't the same after high school and you don't talk to them anymore. It's really weird to think about how like life is different from how different real life is from high school because when you're in high school, you're around like the same people for years. Yeah. Even if you don't, even have friends with them, like you see them in the hallway or like your class, you might have them for like one class, but you are with the same individuals for like many, many years in a row. And then you graduate and you go off into the world where like, I mean, you can literally live your life in a way where you don't see humans ever (laughs) if you don't want to. But like otherwise, like the amount of people you see on a repetitive basis might be like a handful. I don't know. High school, like you could just pass by the same person all the time. But like I might not even see some of my neighbors for like months. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like they're there, but like I'm not forced to be around them. Yeah, or interact or even if you don't like them, you're not forced to do like a group project or something for the neighborhood. (laughs) You might have some like more acquaintancy friends, but since you see them so often, like they feel like real friends or something. I think it's also where you get to the weird idea when you're a kid. Like, you don't really know what... When adults say, like, I only have, like, one or two close friends. That's unimaginable when you're young. Because, like, even, like, acquaintances are kind of your friends. I feel like you have... even Okay, so you might have friends throughout high school or throughout your year at a particular school. And then you also have, like, these acquaintance slash friends for specific classes. So you might not know anybody in gym, but if you hate one person the least or (laughs) you don't dislike one person the most however you want to phrase it like they're not necessarily friends but you are friendly with them actually i kind of think that's why some people have the jobs they do like the most obvious one of course is actually being a teacher because there's nothing like being in high school more than working in a high school with the same people for stay there for fucking years but um I think there's a lot of campusy type jobs out there that people just hold on to, even if they don't pay very well. For that reason, that that sense of community and friendship and yeah. shared experiences. Yeah. Definitely know people who like stay with their with their jobs because they like who they work with. Mm-hmm. That also does kind of go in hand with like you have work friends, but like if I'm gonna have like a social time, I don't want to have a business meeting. I do occasionally meet up with my old coworkers from my old job, which I actually haven't done in a little while, but but I don't work there anymore, so like. I don't know the context for different events that are happening, but that's what I'm saying. Like, if it's all you ever talk about is work, those aren't the people that you're able to, like, take to the next level, I guess. I've noticed that's particularly true of my job now. I feel like everybody here has grown up in a very different situation for me. So trying to relate it all, like, through history or the type of experiences you've had just doesn't work. What do you mean? Like, how'd they grow up? Uh... I guess wealthier is the primary difference and all the, the differences that stem from that. You know, it's, it's kind of hard to relate the kind of experiences you have as a kid just running around playing with trash in the woods versus somebody who, you know... <laughs> Finding poor in the woods. Yeah, like just making shit and throwing rocks and setting fire to things. Like, I wasn't that stereotypical, but it was along those lines. And talking to somebody else who basically had their life planned out for them from piano lessons to soccer and oh. and uh, you, you just talk and you're like, oh, we're very different people. That's I mean, that can be interesting and it can be fun in the short term, but it's, I feel like friendships are born of shared experiences and understanding each other. And if you don't have those historical references, it's much harder. Yeah. Um, I was going to say, because I actually, the childhood you described, the first one, yeah, was like, if you throw a lot of like, also sitting around and reading by myself <laughs> that was me and all the kids in our neighborhood were like boys my brother's age somehow like it just worked out that way so we would hang out in the woods and build forts and dig holes and throw dirt at each other <laughs> we literally had a game called dirt bomb fighting. <laughs> i don't know if josh felt pity or he was forced to play with us or like he actually or fight with me or he actually like was okay with it sometimes but we did play dirt bomb fight once <laughs> And we had a big ditch in our backyard. I remember, like, some of the guys were at the bottom of the hill. And because they knew that I couldn't throw as hard, they had let me be at the top of the hill. Because Aww. clearly I couldn't throw the rocks up, or the dirt bombs up the hill and actually hit anybody. But, like, the game was pick up clods of dirt and throw them at each other. Who can hit each other the most? I'm amazed that we didn't actually hurt each other with, like, rocks being in these in dirt clumps. Because... That's, I mean, what if there's a rock just hidden in there, like, and it hits him in the face? I feel like that's the obvious ending to that story is, and then we threw a dirt clod with a rock in it and broke someone's face, and that was the end of that game. Um, no, actually, my brother did, though, once. 
this is a different story, but it snowed once. And then my brother was just like, you know, you skip rocks like that, that way you throw your arm, like you angle your arm. Yeah. Because I remember like our neighbor, like he looked down to see what Josh was doing. And like Josh had let a, like a piece of ice like fly and it hit this kid square in the face. And he had to like, the mom called the ambulance and everything. So he was bleeding everywhere and he had to get stitches in his face. Damn. So like <laughs> that kind of stuff did happen. Jesus. Just going back a little bit. I feel like. Are you are you gonna try a game? Like you don't have to do WoW. I'm just curious if, you, if there's anything out there that does interest you. What game do you think would be a good example of the things we're talking about? Hmm. If I'm gonna try one, so I'd, I'd definitely have to take a look. Not only find a game that seems to match what it is you like to do, which you seem to have similar desires to playing games as my wife. You like mining things and collecting and kind of semi mindless games, but I'm sure you wouldn't mind a little difficulty here and there. Your wife likes games, and I think of her playing games as, like, Assassin's Creed. Yeah. Oh, and also, she was playing, like, Harry Potter Lego game last time I came over. So, you know, is your wife more of a gamer than you right now? Uh, I think that's almost always been the case. If if you include all games, including, like, cheesy ones on the phone, then absolutely. Uh, Even not including cheesy ones on the phone, I still feel like I... I have more memories of her playing games than you, except for I do have you have frequently playing Team Fortress. Yeah, that was kind of the only thing I played for years. But I remember coming home often because I, you know, everybody, I lived with Derek and his wife and one of their friends for a while. That's how I became friends with them. Mm-hmm. But I remember coming home in the, or just coming out in the living room and Assassin's Creed was played a lot. Granted... Your wife and our other roommate played the game a lot, so it could have been both of them on there. But yeah. it was a regular... I, when I think of Assassin's Creed, that's who I think of. I don't think of... I think of one jumping off of a tall building into a thing of hay and just like, ta-da, <laughs> I'm safe. That's how you disappear from people, I think, too. No one saw that amazing feat happen. <laughs> I uh, That game is associated forever with both of them cursing very loudly because the controls in the game are so automated. Like you really just push X and kind of move in that direction a lot. And then it readjusts their direction pointing based on the new camera angle, like in the split second that it happened. So that game is kind of notorious for sending people into raging fucking screaming fest. <laughs> <laughs> and uh i don't like that game so i don't i don't let her i don't stand around to watch her play it anymore because i can't take it but luckily she hasn't tried to in a while i like how you just ended that with and i like that game so like fuck that game you know like the story seems cool and actually it reminds me of another game that is far less popular but i knew from middle school called thief and the whole premise of that game was to literally like kill or sneak around guards and steal things it truly was a stealth game. Like, you didn't jump in haystacks. You, like, crept in certain lights, and you had different kinds of torches. You had to, like, use either a blackjack or a bone arrow or a sword, depending on what the mission called for. I have heard of that game. I have heard of a lot of games, actually. I guess maybe they're just in the general discussion of in America. I don't know, but I've definitely heard of the, the game Thief, though. Huh, I'm surprised. I, can, I, can, I think I can even picture, like, the way it looks. I, I might be... Con- then again... I do live with people like currently who are really into board games. Mm. So there's a pretty good chance that I'm also picturing a board game <laughs> image. Where you quietly walk around the board game and try to steal shit from the other players. Hey, man. You'd be amazed at some of the ways. Because I didn't know board games existed in the way they do now. I used to think that board games were like Monopoly and Risk. Like these really boring games that nobody likes. But I just played a game the other day where like... Your whole point is to build atom bombs. Hmm. Or, or like the game I mentioned earlier, Viticulture, which is not the game you play, but it's a game that like you're making wine. You make and sell wine. You own a vineyard. That's that's the game. I sometimes I sit there and while we're he's explaining the game, like to how we're supposed to play, like he's like the game master guy. And I'm just I sit there and think, like, who came up with this? Who sat around and like tried to figure out <laughs> How you can do this with, like, cards and, like, little people you move around on a board. People who come up with board games, it just, like, blows my mind. I think it starts with a very simple idea and then just progressively gets ruined with more complications. That's kind of how it sounds like. What, the, what board games? A lot of new board games. Like, I, I'll acknowledge there's kind of a board game renaissance going on in the past decade or so, at least. But it seems more and more like they're just computer games with no computer to do all the, the number crunching for you. 
Oh. That's always what Dungeons and Dragons felt like. Yeah. It's basically a computer game where you do all the math. I'm like, that's not fun. My roommate and I have actually had this conversation. We were talking about how, like, what we like about playing board games as compared to computer games. And, like, the the calculation, the thinking, and, like, the tactile experience are all things we actually enjoy. Like, yeah, you do have to keep track of certain things. But, like, you've played the game Life, right? Yeah. Okay. I used to go to, like, a friend's house when I was a kid. We used to play the game Life. And Life was fun because it had, like, the clicky wheel and, like, the funny board and... Hmm. One day, they developed, like the company developed, the computerized version of life. I felt like the experience of playing on the computer was nowhere near as enjoyable. And I feel like we only played on the computer one time. (laughs) It wasn't as fun, like, clicking the thing to see how many spaces you would go. Or, like, and you don't get to put, like, the little people in your car. Like, I had a baby. You put, like, a little baby in. The game does it for you. Like... The physical experience of moving the pieces around, I don't know, like, you only had the beginning, like, kind of that fun part. Like, you're in the only learning phase. You don't get to actually be like, oh, this is how you do it. Yeah. Like, it's way more fun once you get, like, the, oh, aha, and then, like, you can start from the beginning of the next game and, like, crush everyone, which is what I love to do. (laughs) But anyway, I don't know. It's just, like, the feeling of it. It's also, like, people are actually, like, in the room together, hanging out, doing something, because, like... We could have a LAN party, and we could have, like, four computers on that table, and we we're all playing the same game together. But you're not really talking to each other. You're not looking at each other. There's no side jokes happening. There's no food being shared. There's no, like, the other guy, roommate, is, like, the music guy. He always, like, puts on, like, some obscure random thing that's, like, perfect for the for the game. I don't know how he even finds this stuff. But, like, we played um, Building the Atom Bomb game. He put on some, like, 50s music. And it was just, like, maybe 40s. We were trying to get the right decade for, like, when the atom bomb was being developed. And it was just, like, you have this, like, feeling. Because, like, it's being... You've cultivated the feeling, of course, with music and, like, the kind of game you're playing. But you don't get that playing, like, on the computer. If you're on the computer the whole time, like, you're looking at the computer and you're only talking about what's happening there. But, like, even if you were to, like, be playing, like, Pokemon Go, the board game, you can look at each other. Something about not using a computerized device and so you're not in your own personal space, like only looking at this one device has all the information. There's a shared environment with a board game. You're playing a shared board. Even if you're only playing your own board, but it's like you're playing with each other, you're still like, if it's somebody else's turn, you're probably looking around. Like you're not just staring at the game being like, what are they going to do next? Like you look at them to see what they're going to do next. Well, they do share food and talk to each other. It's just, I think... There's one thing that you're kind of right about is using a computer does seem to dissuade people from actually conversing in a more direct way. Like they're not interacting with each other, they're interacting with the computer. And so they don't need to look up and say a whole lot. Like the the need is not there as much. Yeah, it's like the computer's first and then people are second in the situation. And not only that, like obviously people love the tactile feel of things. Otherwise we wouldn't have like custom uh, chess boards and you know, marble pieces and hand carved uh, boards. And like, even now when you buy new games, there's always a premium edition that's, that uses real metal and wood and stuff instead of plastic and cardboard. And that's actually a thing that we've, I'm saying we, like I'm doing any of this. I'm just like (laughs) a willing player in these games. But the one guy, he's the biggest lover of board games here, of all of us. Board games are one of the things he actually pays money for, like the physical object to own. But he also spends money on, like, getting, like, real coins, like, instead of using, like, little cardboard pieces. And we have definitely noticed, like, when we use, like, the pieces that are made of, like, have, like, a heavier weight, instead of having, like, a little wooden block that's painted gray to be represent metal, like, you have a little piece of metal. The gameplay experience is way better. I even, like, sometimes when you open new games, like, I love feeling the cards and, like, you ever, like, open a book and you smell it and it smells good? I love smelling Damn. board games when they're first open. <laughs> You used one of my least favorite examples. Yeah, that's right. I don't even like books. <laughs> All the time I'm bringing up books with you. <laughs> or like physical books. <laughs> Fucking hate that. Oh, but don't you love the smell of books? I wasn't trying to do that. I was actually, I was using it as a way to help you understand. But obviously it's like the word you're like, I don't understand that. Like, I think that's stupid. <laughs> but they have done studies on that smell, Derek. Old book smell has, like, hints of, like, vanilla and all this other stuff in it that, like, is supposed to be very appealing to people. And you just take it and you're just like, 
throw it across the room. I don't need this. <laughs> give me give me the slow Kindle any day. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> I agree that it can be a pleasant tactile experience to read a book or do something physical over a screen, but we all use screens still. Nobody's chucking their phones in favor of, you know, everything else that they used to carry because it is more convenient and the overall experience is better and the added benefits like searching and looking up definitions. Holy crap. This reminds me from an earlier conversation. You were talking about how you love the Kindle uh, be, to look things up. And I re distinctly remember sitting in my recliner when I was in middle school reading books. You know, I wasn't that smart of a kid. So there was plenty of words I didn't understand. And I kept thinking about going to Target or the store or something and buying one of those computerized uh, uh, shit. dictionary. Yes, yes. And I kept thinking about buying a computerized dictionary so that I could look up words fast. Oh, my God. I forgot those even existed. That was a thing. Yeah. And it was like a little square with little keypad buttons. And like it wasn't even a big screen for you to see what it was. No, you had to scroll. It was like a calculator with a yeah. dictionary built into it. And I they were like forty dollars, which, you know, for middle school was a lot. So I didn't I never got one, but I man, when the Kindle first came out and I saw that, or I could read on my phone and look up words, I'm like, this is fucking awesome. But of course there's also a million other things that kids like to do with those besides read books. So had I actually had access to a phone where I could look things up, I'm sure I'd have instead been playing some dumb shit. Well, that's one thing that's good about the Kindle. I will okay, I will say. I remember we used to have debates about the Kindle versus paperback books. Yeah. And then eventually, like, I think you actually Oh, you found me a Kindle mm. on the internet that was like cheap and I was like, All right, fine, I'll finally do this. This is how people get me to do things a lot, is by being like appealed <laughs> to my cheap side. <laughs> so the one thing I will say, because I recently have read a book in paperback. Ooh. And I didn't even finish it because I got to this. I'm going to tell you why I didn't finish it. Because I am so used to being able to read at night without having a light source shining on the book. Yeah. Because, like, I have a lamp next to my bed. It even, like, I can change its direction. But if I, I can only lay on, like, one side in a particular way. And I really love just being able to hold the Kindle without having to, like, hold the book open because the Kindle literally is just one page. It's just a flat thing. So it only takes one hand with no extra light source and I can read. I love that. Mm -hmm. That's, like, the main thing that I like about it. You can carry, like, a million books around your pocket or your purse, I guess. It doesn't fit in your pocket, but... Actually, it does fit in your pocket if you have guy pants. Maybe if I took the case off, but I don't think so. That's not how they make ladies' pants. <laughs> if you're uh, if you're wearing ladies' pants, you should just be happy you have pockets. That that they deign to give you pockets is just you know appreciate that. Well, I'm back. Are you there? No. <laughs> okay. Let's, let's wait. Let's wait over here. Just talking to myself. Yeah. <laughs>